Well, I think the, the museum is important for a number of reasons. One, the fire department has a rich history, not only here in the brothels, but also as an industry. It really is a story more than it is a building and hardware. In the early years, uh, the city utilized wooden water mains to supply the city with water. These were just buried in the middle of the streets, and when a fire alarm sounded, they would actually drill, dig a hole, drill a hole in the wooden water main, thus filling up the hole with water. When the fire was completely extinguished, they would get a wooden plug, plug the water main, and this would actually be marked on the side of the street at the curb thus marking a fire plug. When people would call in for a fire or an EMS emergency, this is where those phone calls would come. And there was no 911 system at that time, so they actually had to dial a seven digit number. And we would actually answer the phone calls here, punch a time card when the, when the call came in, wake the, the firefighters up and send them out on a call. In the next room in here, we have a lot of the history of our department. We have some of our older apparatus. This piece right here is our crown jewel, our, our first piece of fire apparatus. Morning, Stacy. You know, it's, it, it is one of the first pieces of apparatus that we had, if you consider apparatus something that you would pull or drive. We do have older equipment in the museum. We have some leather fire buckets, some metal fire buckets, and even some old extinguishers. But this truly is a crown jewel. It's something that a lot of departments would, would love to have. It's something that we use to put fires out and it's something that we cherish. I think what's interesting is we move from the hose car over to the next engine, the next apparatus in the museum, is that it's a 1923 American LaFrance. A lot of people don't realize that every vehicle doesn't have automatic transmissions and all of the, uh, the accoutrements that allow us to drive so simply today. This one has obviously a manual transmission, but you also had to adjust the ignition timing while you're driving the vehicle to make sure that you could get down the road expediently and efficiently. This bay is very unique. Many years ago, this is where the horse-drawn apparatus was. The metal tires that went in and out actually made their indention into the concrete. And we have a, a potbelly stove and they would get the coal out of there, stoke the fire to create the steam to pump the pump, and while the other firefighter took off and opened up the gate for the horses. The horses would come in, back in, the harness system would be lowered around the horses. The firefighter would tie them off, secure their harness system, and both guys were ready to go. And they would typically get that job done within 60 seconds. This area, we have an assortment of different fire buckets that we have acquired. And why are they just particular fire buckets? It's with the design shape. You can see here that the lower part is extended and it keeps the bucket from being set down. Because it was pretty much useless for anything else, it wouldn't disappear. It wouldn't disappear from where it was supposed to be and be used for another use. And the reason that's important is that you don't have time to look for the bucket when the fire breaks out. The stories are the firefighters would pull this, this truck out. By the time they got to, to the other end of the plaza, it, it was loaded with, with volunteers. The people took pride in their jobs as well, even as a volunteer firefighter. It's about saving lives, but it's also about serving the community and helping other people. The United States Army the military had an assistance program, the MAST unit. Those units were just coming out of the Vietnam and Korean War, and those pilots were working in the black darkness. Today, they utilize cameras that can see in the dark and infrared cameras. Those pilots didn't have those luxuries. Those pilots were talking to stories where they had a canopy of trees flying in. The rotor wash would open up the trees. They would go in, pluck the people um, through ropes, pull back up, open that canopy, and, and pull out to safety. And although they weren't taking any bullets on, but they said the mission was definitely hard. The I've Been In Fisher Fire was one of the largest commercial fires in the downtown area of New Braunfels. This was a very significant fire to the city. This was the very first fire that um, we had a firefighter killed in the line of duty. Ernest Alvis Jr., um, there was actually three firefighters that were hurt during this fire. The awning in front of the building actually collapsed. You can't talk to anybody who's been a firefighter for a career, for a lifetime, and them honestly look you in the eye and say it hasn't changed their life. I think what I'd like people to know about the building behind us is, yes, it's a beautiful structure, it's a museum, it has a lot of wonderful equipment in it, a lot of wonderful apparatus that all have rich history, but more than that, it's full of stories. It's full of stories of the firefighters who responded in those apparatus, 
And it's also full of stories of the people who were assisted when those firefighters responded. So I would encourage people when they come by to look at it, to ask, to ask questions about what stories are in there and what stories they can learn about, not only the history of the fire department, but also the history of New Bronx. Thank you.